How's it going everybody and welcome back to our Nexus dashboard series. I'm going to dive right into what we're going to be doing considering it's going to take some time for everything to get done. I am going to go ahead and walk you through the process of adding switches to our VXLAN fabric. Um, it's a pretty straightforward process but I wanted to make sure I walk you through all the different details. I'm going to go ahead and click on actions and add switches. The seed IP here is going to be 10.255.1.91. And then I'm going to put through 94. Protocol MD5 is fine. I'm going to come in here and type in, this is going to be NDFC. And then the password we set on the box, which is going to be that. And then max hops is going to be two, preserve config, no. So max hops means that you're willing to do, to, to hop through the network to figure out who's doing what. Uh, and as long as you have the right credentials. Preserve config means that you're going to save the config that's on the box. So if you were doing a brownfield deployment, let's well, say so you already had an existing VXLAN fabric, but you wanted to import it into Nexus dashboard, you would uh, you would check that box. It's just going to import it into into the fabric and reboot the switches. So I'm sorry, it doesn't it doesn't reboot them if you already have them operational. It'll just import them in. Um, it only because it's basically a um, actually, I've never actually tested. So at least I'm 99% sure it doesn't reboot them. I know on a green field it does. So and that's what we're going to be doing here in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Discover Switches. And it says all switch configuration other than management will be removed immediately after import. Do you want to proceed? Confirm. This will take a couple seconds. It's going to go reach out to those IP addresses and see if it can't talk to them. And it can. So I'm going to click on Save. And it's got N1, N4, N2, N3. It's got the serial number, the IP address, the platform, the version, and that it's manageable. I'm going to click on here and say add switches. It says all switches will be re rebooted after they are added. Please wait until they uh, become up normal. So what's going to end up happening is you're going to get this. You're going to see some communication. And you see the, the progress bar here. What you will end up seeing is some information going across. The progress will go from left to right, and eventually you'll see the detail coming across. I saved the config. The only thing that could potentially happen right now is because there's a lot of load in another lab that there could be the potential of the switch crashing during the reboot. But most of the time they come up pretty, pretty easily. So as you can see, this is coming across. Once this is done across the board, the switches will reboot. And once they reboot, then we'll be able to go from there. We just have to wait for them to, to get added. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself. And there you, you can see that the manual, there it goes. So that should be able to move on. Okay, since the switches are mostly rebooted, um, it's gonna take a couple more minutes for them to finish doing their thing. Uh, you don't have to stay here. Uh, even though it says switch added and stuff like that, you could close this out. I'm just gonna go ahead and let it do its thing for another moment or two. But when we click close, the switches will be in a good spot. They'll come up, they'll be powered up, they'll be saved. We'll be able to move on to the next station, which basically is gonna be setting the roll for each switch and going from there, which is pushing the, the configuration down to it. So I'm just going to wait until these switches are completely booted up and ready to go. All right, so it looks like all four of our switches are up now, which is a great sign. I'm going to go ahead and do that, close this out. And now we have this. So discovery status is gonna be unreachable and stuff like that. Eventually these will clean themselves up, but we need to go reference our topology to understand where they're gonna be. So to understand the hierarchy of a spine, spine, spine leaf and fabric or topology, you have to first understand the difference between the two. A spine is going to be interconnector of leaf switches. So it is going to be 
the, uh, it's going to connect everything together. So lead switches are going to be what your all of your endpoints connect to. Lead switches are going to connect to spines. Spines are going to connect to other lead switches. There's a bunch of different roles that lead switches can can do. They can be uh, a leaf is going to connect to anything but a, another leaf switch, except for a VPC design. So what will end up happening is you'll get a spine switches. So Nexus 1 and Nexus 2 are going to be our spine switches. They're going to connect everything together. N3 and N4 are going to be leaf switches in this design. So I'm going to jump back over here. N1 and N2 are already spines. And then I'm going to click on this guy. I'm going to come over here to, and you can see discovery status is OK. Actions, set role, and that's going to be leaf select. And then it's going to say recalculate and deploy. Click on this guy here, actions, set role, leaf. So you have a bunch of other options as well. You have the border. Are you going to be connecting to the outside world? So eventually seven and eight will be border leaves. And then uh, we'll have five and six will be uh, leaf switches as well, but just in a VPC design. You can do a border spine where the border connects to the outside world is also a spine. You have a border gateway, which connects to other VXLAN fabrics and the outside world. So this is going to be your interconnection if you want to do multi-site. Border gateway spine, where you're connected to the outside world, but you're also a spine. You have a super spine. A super spine is going to be a, spine, a pair of spines, which is that sit logically above the existing spine. So that's what they refer to as a super spine. Uh, I've never really seen this deployed, but it's, it's an option there. And the same thing with border and gateway. Then you have Tor, which is top of rack. So, so there's that. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to click on the Actions tab here at the top, and I'm going to click on Recalculate and Deploy. And what that's going to do is going to bring all the config in. And it's going to say, what do you got going on here? And it's going to generate all the configuration for us. And I'm going to take a few minutes with you guys, and I'm going to walk you through what it looks like. This is going to be... All the stuff that you normally would have to know to deploy a VXLAN fabric with, this is going to generate the config for you. Makes it a whole lot easier. And yes, we're looking at a lot of config. So if we click, click, we click here, you're going to see it's going to do NGOAM, OSPF, LLDP, BGP, NV overlay, all that good stuff. We're going to have our MTU set um, for their endpoints. We're going to have our route reflector configured. Um, a BGP config, OSPF underlay, all that good stuff, and this is this is one of our spines. So there's that config. So it does everything. It configures the entire switch. Management IP, close. Same thing with this guy here. He's going to have a bit more config. He's going to have DHCP, LACP, stuff like that. Um, VN segment, VLAN base, interface VLAN, Fabric 40, Anycast Gateway, uh, stuff like that. So these are all going to be the capabilities that are going to be needed to be deployed when we roll out devices and stuff like that in the network. If we scroll down here, we have all of our DHCP information option for doing DHCP relay and all that stuff that goes along with it. And we have our interface NVE loopback one is our source host, reach, host reachability protocol of BGP. What's interesting about this is, I don't know if it's going to show us here. Yeah, it's not. So um, I will show you what this looks like on the CLI once it's deployed. So this will be a quick one. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Deploy All. I'm going to bring up the this guy here. And you're going to see some stuff populate here as the config gets pushed. Okay, so all of our config has been pushed now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click log in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go full screen here just to show you what I'm looking at here. I'm gonna do a show run. And I'm just gonna go space for all the way down to the bottom. Now, it's probably not gonna show you this. I'm gonna scoot back up real quick to see if it's actually gonna be here. I don't see it. Okay, so the way that it deploys stuff, 
is it does it in what they call a profile. Yeah, so what I mean by that is when you configure VRFs, VLANs, SVIs, all that type of stuff, it anything in the overlay, it does it based off of a profile. And the profile is supposed to be like a template that gets plugged into the switch. So instead of me configuring BGP or whatever, it's gonna go do that based off of a profile config. So um, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to show it to you here because I'm not that far along yet. But um, if we click on close here, now we can see everything has been configured the way that it needs to be. Everybody's happy, all that good stuff. So what, what I'll do from between now and the next video is I will boot all these servers up. I'll get Switch 13 configured and then we'll be able to go forward and get all this stuff uh, operational. I'll put some context to what you see down here and we'll be able to get the rest of the uh, configuration going. We'll go through and deploy some VLAN, some VR, uh, VRF, some SVIs. Um, I'll figure out exactly the the what it is VLANing wise and what I'm gonna do because I'm gonna do probably a couple of VRFs just for some multi-tenancy and show you guys what that looks like. So until next time guys, thanks so much for stopping by and I'll catch all of you in the next video.